nation as one by one more hopeful coppery coils grew and settled above my 11 year old vagina. In those early years we lived at peace. I admired your vibrant colour and springy texture. You were part of a rugged new central landscape that I was regularly exploring. In those days I was blissfully innocent. I didn't know that your struggling pioneers on my inner thigh were an offensive frontier known as a bikini line. But then friends and Dolly and Cosmo made it known. This was one of those places where my teenage body must be cleared of its still new native growth. And so began the great wars. I turned on you with all my pubescent anger and shame. I hacked at your edges with razors, dissolved your borders with nair cream. But each time you returned stronger, redder, wilder. How was I to know that by cutting you off above the root, I had unleashed an ancient Celtic curse? <laughs> you grew up, you grew back almost faster than I could shave you, advancing with all the might and fury of Braveheart's army down my upper thigh. I was locked in a losing battle with you <clears throat> until my late teens, when I discovered waxing. To gain some territory, I willingly entered a phase of self-mortification that would impress Opus Day. <laughs> in my early 20s, I submitted myself for that great pubic atrocity known as the Brazilian. <laughs> I almost fainted, and when I came to, the beautician was holding the wax strip up to the light, so I could see your thousands of sensuous russet hairs that I dyed for my vanity. Afterwards, I didn't think about the violence or loss my boyfriend and I were too captivated by the touch and feel of my silky smooth vaginal lips. And so I continued with this bizarre and costly torture on and off throughout my 20s and 30s. I knew it wasn't an act of self-love and inevitably questioned the nature of my soul as I spread my ass cheeks on a beautician's table. But for some small time while my bald labora majora was still smarty and scented with aloe vera, I felt like I had the upper hand. As the years went on, you became thinner and weaker. Most of you lost your copper red glint and became hay coloured and cheap looking, like pubes by Ikea. <laughs> now and then I found one of you that had turned a shocking white, longer and stronger than the others, as if to say to me, look, this is what suffering does. <laughs> I took pleasure in plucking out those smug elders of yours with tweezers. And now I've found a way to conquer you once and for all, because laser technology is finally strong enough to kill even your stubborn Scottish roots. <laughs> but once again, I did not think about the huge personal cost, including the new and unusual pain of having a laser beam up my bum. Ginger pubes, after all these years of trying to squash your growth, the saddest thing is knowing that now you'll never again fight back. I look at your traumatized survivors on my landing strip and I hope you live on to turn long and white. You're the only ones left who know the painful ba battles of this pussy that is now being returned to a false terranalias. <laughs> <clears throat> Are we there yet? My voice is so whiny in the back seat of my head. In the front seat I drive past shadow landscapes and neon signs, promising around the next corner a realer, better life. We can't be far now, though I'm scared I've missed the turn off. Siri had such convoluted directions for lasting love and motherhood. Now the road is lonely, there is static on the s every station and my hands are sweaty on the steering. I just want to arrive at that place I booked. Strength, success, synergy. Or else drive into a ditch and have someone very heavy lie on top of me. This car is a bomb I bitch from the back. I sigh. I wonder if the journey would be easier in a family sedan, self-delighting convertible, or monster truck on methamphetamine. I floor it into compressed darkness. Now no neon, just a line of bright, broken white and the stars to guide me. 
Light mobs the cool dew windows and charcoal angels sneak in, singing favours of death, change, forgiveness, patience. They kiss our crumb-lined car seats and I close my eyes for tall towers of seconds without veering off the road. I slow down. I think I've hit something. Perhaps epic peace. But it falls away. So I pass a bag of chips back to myself and count down the miles. This is called The Drop. <clears throat> I'm sitting on a little ledge, swinging my legs, swinging my legs off the edge. The drop beckons like a lover, calling, hello my darling, you big brawny, you clear morning, you voluptuous excess. It tells me what I am it is, a place where I can die, dig about and feel my depth. Yes, there is an inkling, a dim star in my belly, but fear is a force field between me and the black, black, glittering abyss. I stroke on my things, machine-made stuff with sharp edges gathering dust. I'm running out of space up here, yet I'm still so greedy to fill it up. I yearn to unsquish, to be loose and limbless, but I'm stuck, sweating over false choices, dripping divine sweat onto the small stuff. My legs swing bravely, but my good cop, bad cop is backs against the wall, sensing its annihilation in the bigness beneath. It's a terrible temptation to think I can be as boundless as love, that I'm both brittle and brawn, brittle and brawn, brawn and brittle. I clench my hands and say I'm not ready to be the gnarled tree in Savannah Plain, to read the hieroglyphics of my heart in clay mortal cliffs. But I'm still swinging my legs, swinging my legs off this edge, and I have pins and needles as I inch closer to that sweet, perfect, bottomless pit. Seven minutes. Sometimes I do this act dressed up as a magician, so you can imagine me dressed up as a magician if you like. I know what you're waiting for, what you expect. You're thinking, please, no more teas or dancing chaplain-esque. You're ready for the big reveal, the moment of glory, the glorious epiphany. Are you sick of the smoke and mirrors? Do you want to see some real magic? Well, don't look at me. Real magic is hard to find. I'm just paid to create illusions. But of course, we know that. That's why we're here, escaping co-op dramas and to-do lists and those boring thoughts that don't know they're boring and are so persistent. Because it's easy to get unmagicked by meanness and mundanity. Thinking about wars, famine, the shrinking Amazon, the horror of Donald Trump leading this country. <coughs> Suffering all the spectacle of a reality with cameras and goddess worship that's limited to Instagram followers. Nowadays, we all hail the magic of technology and live in fear of stock market sorcery. Too busy right now, we revere the future tense. We still persecute witches, but dealing with the devil is no longer a punishable offence. All around us are hardened tricksters, like the bankers who bend melted coins, the politicians who speak from the false bottoms of their hearts, and the arms makers who grin as they pull dead rabbits out of hats. So I get by with whatever magic I can muster, sometimes remembering to remember the wonder. Sometimes I visualise the perfect partner, the perfect job, an orgy of cash. I pray for small miracles and I survive bad days with a few makeshift spells. When it's too hard to go inwards, I turn to new age gurus and my oracle, the internet. It shows us how we can be everywhere at once, but actually we already are. Hallmark and Hollywood cash in, but it's us who own the wordless founding magic of our favourite cliches. Sunsets, fireworks against the odds triumphs, 
The top shelf magic of falling in love and dreams coming true. The surprising magic of inspiration. The steady, everyday magic of best friends, good manners, power balance, and masturbation. <laughs> if I can be still for long enough, forgetting I'm waiting, forgiving myself into quiet, then I realize I don't need anything. I'm already powerful, paranormal, an aged sorcerer, a dancing dervish, a filthy sadhu, a wizened witch. I'm just a speck in my center, but that makes me impossibly big. Watch while I vanish from the stage and reappear to work the clouds, commuting with the divine, leaving a trail of silk scarves as I curve with all the bends in a big bruised sky. Don't wait or try to believe. Just close your eyes and see. You, me, we all have some real magic up our sleeves.